We're talking with Dr. Greg Curtin, board certified radiologist, and we're going to be talking about different types of x-rays. Greg, welcome to the Dr. Bob Show. Thanks, Dr. Bob. Tell me, what are some of the recent advances in radiology? I think some of the biggest advances I've seen in the last few years has been the use of PACS, which is a, a, a computerized way of reading x-rays and CT scans, MRIs. Instead of reading from a traditional x-ray film, uh, which we did when I st started out in practice, now pretty much all the studies are read from a computer monitor, a high resolution monitor. And that basically allows us to read much more efficiently without the technologists having to pull films and rehang them. And we're able to get through a lot more information uh, more efficiently and uh, you know, more timely. I guess the other major uh, improvement or advance I've seen is uh, the use of multi-detector CT scanning. And that, Malta detector, what is that? It is in the, when CT scanners first came around, they uh, basically it was an x-ray beam that was produced by uh, what's called an x-ray tube and a single receptor. Uh, what it did was it shot x-ray beams through the patient while the whole tube was rotating and then it reprocessed the information into a two-dimensional image or what we call CT slices. Uh, over the past 10 years, we've gone from single detectors to multi-detector, where two to four to eight detectors, now up to 64 detectors are functioning wow. at one time as one unit. So does it make a clearer image, a faster image, better image, all the above? It's pretty much all the above. It's, it's taken, it takes a much shorter time to scan the same uh, area of the body. <clears throat> the resolution is much better. And uh, again, there's much less artifact from p patients breathing or moving during the study. What's the difference between a CAT scan and an MRI? Well, a CAT scan uses traditional x-ray beams. It's, it's, a, it's an x-ray type of study using x-ray radiation. And it's, it's processed with a, a very sophisticated computer to make the images. An MRI does not use any type of x-ray uh, radiation. What it does is it puts, we put the patient into a high strength magnetic field that aligns the proton, hydrogen protons in the body along an axis, and then they use radio pulses or radio signals to distort that spin, and then they can uh, it emit signals, and we use uh, that, that information. Which gives you a clearer image, a CAT scan, multidimensional, or a MRI? I think for the brain, for the spine, for joints, the, the knee, the shoulder, the MRI gives a much more detailed, uh, improved look at, the, at that whole uh, area, whereas a CT scan is really probably has an advantage in the chest and the abdomen. Uh, there's, it's the CT is a much quicker scan. It takes much less time, so there's much less breathing artifact in the chest. Uh, there's not as much uh, movement of the uh, abdominal structures, the GI tract, uh, as uh, during a CT scan when compared with an MR. You get calls from doctors that say, uh, you know, I've got a, some, a patient with a problem here or there. Should I get an MRI or a CAT scan? And the radiologist guides the type of x-ray that's needed? Or does the doctor just write for the guy? We, they oftentimes will call us because there's a lot of overlap between the two studies. Uh, when you, we're dealing with, a, say, a soft tissue mass uh, in the abdomen or, say, in the extremity, so, uh, occasionally a CT will be better. Uh, oftentimes an MR will, will have an advantage. So we try to tailor the exam, what type of test and, and how we do the test based on you know, the specific uh, the problem, problem. in the area that's there. Now, right. I got a couple of other names. PET scan, P-E-T, what's a PET scan? Well, a PET scan is really a nuclear medicine scan. It's, uh, instead of shooting radiation uh, through the patient like a traditional X-ray or, or CAT scan, the patient is injected with a small amount of uh, radiation or, or, or tracer, similar to a bone scan or a lot of these nuclear medicine tests. It, uh, the PET scan is uh, it's often combined with a, with a CAT scan and the, the tracer that we inject is very, it's taken up uh, by metabolic, active tissue, like a, especially in cancer patients. So you use that to detect early cancer? It's used oftentimes to, uh, in a, when a patient is initially diagnosed with cancer, uh, we, we use it in certain types of tumors to stage that patient or determine how, if that cancer is localized to one area, if it's spread to lymph nodes, and oftentimes in follow-up to see if a patient's responding to treatment or a few years down the line if, they're, if they remain disease free. It's a, it's a good, good study for that. MRA, we had an MRI, what's an MRA? MRA is essentially an MRI which is looking at blood vessels. Uh, the A stands for angiography. 
And we use MRA, it's, it's done in the same machine uh, as, as an MRI of the knee or head uh, or spine, but it, uh, it's really tailored to look at blood vessels, oftentimes the carotid arteries or the small blood vessels in the, in the brain. You've really got to be smart to be a radiologist, don't you? Uh, that's debatable. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look you at have the, to keep up on it, though. Let's look at the pictures of some of the machines sure. so if we can tell the difference between. This is a... This is a CAT scanner. Uh, it's, uh, that table moves through that tube there, and that, in that tube are the uh, x-ray, the, the, what we call the tube, or the, uh, the detector and the uh, so x-ray generator. And we do a good job on the chest here. Let's look at the next picture. And here we, it, that looks like the same thing, a little bit tighter. This is a little bit tighter, a little bit longer. It's an MRI machine, or ah. what we call a magnet. So Joints, soft tissue, brain, this one does better in those areas? It does better in spine, brain, uh, and joints. Uh, did anybody get claustrophobia here? It was, you know, about 5% of patients will have problems with claustrophobia, although uh, oftentimes they do well with the smaller magnets, the, uh, they're not as constrictive, and also sometimes with a, just a mild oral sedative, they'll do very well. And let's look at the next one, because this is called, the next picture is a, this is an open MRI then. So here there's no claustrophobia. This is very little. There's, you have, you can see around you, you can see your feet, and uh, so there, it's much less uh, restrictive than a, than a traditional uh, short bore or, or smaller bore closed MRI. Let's look at some x-rays, right? I want you to show me. Let's look at the first x-ray that we've got here now. I think I know what this one is. That's, Tell me about this. Well, this is your standard chest x-ray, a uh, single view of the chest, and uh, this is kind of the meat and potatoes uh, of a lot of hospitals. Okay. The, the thing in the middle is the... The heart is in the middle. And, and then the, there's the ribs that you can see going out to the side. And up on the top, that's the collarbone, there, it is. isn't it? What is this x-ray here? Because that looks far different. This is a, a CT scan of the heart using that multi-detector technique I was telling you about with a 64 slice. And this is actually a 3D reconstruction uh, image of the heart that was used in, in a patient who's had bypass surgery. Now, so this is going to tell you how the bypass is working uh, will this tell you, can you really go down high definition on one coronary artery like the left anterior descending? With the, with the higher resolution scans now with the 64 slice, uh, you can get a very good look at, uh, at the individual coronary arteries, the, the LAD, the main coronary arteries, and uh, to determine if there's plaque, if there are any blockages in the arteries. And it's done in a, in a non-invasive way. It doesn't require... By non-invasive, you mean you don't have to put a wire up there. You don't have to do a cath. That's right. It doesn't, it doesn't require an arterial puncture in order to get a catheter into, that, uh, into the aorta. So we'll be able to identify normal or abnormal coronary arteries without having to really do a cath? That's pretty much it. It's a, a great technique to determine if there's coronary disease uh, in a patient, say, who's having chest pain but really doesn't have risk factors or maybe has never been diagnosed uh, in order to get a yes or no answer. Wow, so the really advancements here in heart problems. Let's go to the next x-ray and see what we've got. Now, uh, this is in the chest also, and, but this looks very different. What's, what's this showing? This is another CT scan, and this is um, what's called a CT angiogram. It's similar to the MR angiogram, except that it's done with a CT and with IV contrast, or contrast that's injected in the vein. And what we're seeing in those bright areas, those branching uh, yeah, it looks structures. like branches from a tree. Exactly. That's the, those are the pulmonary arteries, the arteries that go from the heart into the lungs. When we, what, we use this test a lot for uh, looking for pulmonary emboli, or blood clots that have gone from the leg or from the arms into the uh, lungs. And easy to see when you see one? Very easy to see. Uh, the, even a small clot will show up fairly well if, it's a, if we have a patient that's not moving a lot, but uh, the larger ones are very easy to see. Isn't that phenomenal to be able to see that? And this is another, uh, has this also replaced an invasive technique that we used years ago where we had to puncture the, the, the vein in the leg to get a catheter in. Let's look at the next x-ray. Oh, now that's obviously up in the brain. Uh, is this a routine x-ray or is this a CAT scan or an MRI? What is this? This is a, a picture from an MRI of the brain and uh, this is called a sagittal image where we're looking at a cross section as if the patient is looking this way and we're looking at the brain from the side. Really, it's, that cut is right down the middle of the brain. And, and right in the middle is the part you call the midbrain, isn't it? There's the, the, you have the cerebellum, the triangle, triangular area in the back and then the brain stem which goes down into the, into the spinal cord. Uh, that, let's, let's go to the next x-ray. Now this is a different slice. This is, if you like, you're slicing straight through 
the brain, and is this an MRI or a CAT scan, or what is this? This is an MRI of the brain, the same uh, type of test that was shown in the last picture. This is actually a different sequence where, that shows the cerebrospinal fluid and the blood vessels a little bit better, but it, uh, it's, uh, it's a cut right through the, uh, through the, the mid portion of the brain. Now, I want to know the advantage between this x-ray and the next one, which is a CAT scan that we're going to show. This doesn't look like it's showing you much. It doesn't, it doesn't, it pro doesn't give the same fine detail as far as blood vessels or small lesions, but it's still the, uh, the, the standard uh, in, in the emergency room setting when we're looking for a patient with an acute stroke to determine whether there's a, a bleed or bleeding in the brain or whether there's a, 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 what's called a bland infarct. So it's a very, very useful test uh, in the emergent setting for looking, at, looking for a, a tumor or a small vascular malformation or an aneurysm, something uh, more subtle than the MRI definitely has a, an advantage uh, in, in, the, in that setting. Boy, I like the sophistication that you all give. Let's look at the next x-ray and see if I can figure out what this one is. Uh, that, that's uh, pretty easy. What is that? Well, this is a standard x-ray of the knee, uh, and uh, we're looking directly at the knee. Again, we see the bones very well, uh, the joint spaces, but not much uh, other information other than the, the, uh, the bones. The air between the upper bone, the femur, and the lower bone, the tibia, and the little thing on the side, tibula, that's where cartilage is? That's where the cartilage is. Uh, of course, all the, the joint fluid would be in there and all the ligaments uh, and uh, let's, let's, tendons. Let's, next x-ray. Now, it's, what is this, MRI or CAT scan? This is an MRI of the knee, and this sh it's pretty much the same projection as the x-ray, except we're seeing the, the cartilage uh, overlying the bone on both sides. It gives you, uh, give you a really exquisite look at the cartilage. And also those, those black triangular areas on either side are the menisci. We talk about the leader, so lateral and medial menisci. Okay, next x-ray, because we've only got about 30 seconds here. That's a, that has to be a spine. This is a spine, actually a CT scan that was obtained after dye was injected into the spinal canal. I want the viewers to look very carefully at this because this is a CAT scan. Now we're going to see what an MRI looks like. And wow, it, it looks like this is a drawing right here. It's, uh, it is a very detailed, uh, uh, high resolution picture of the spine. You can see the, those block uh, areas are the vertebral bodies in the lumbar spine. And the area, the little uh, smaller areas between them are the discs. It's the discs. So these discs are where they're supposed to be. The, this is a normal study, and so those are where they should be. How often do you see an abnormal study? We see, I would say probably two-thirds or more are abnormal. We typically, typically see patients with back pain. Oftentimes they'll have arthritis in the back, and m many times disc herniations or, or disc bulges. Greg, have we gone through our major advances in radiology? Or are we going to have more things that are better and newer in the next 10 years? I think we're going to see a lot of uh, advances. We we've, we've certainly have advanced quite a bit in the last five to 10 years in CT. But we'll, we're going to start to see more and more uh, MRI imaging applications for, for breast cancer or breast cancer diagnosis. And I think uh, the, we'll continue to see advances in, in CT and, M, and MR. I, I'm, I'm just, my hats are off to the radiologists because they make it so easy for the doctors to know what's going on because you give us all the information. Thank you for your training, for your interest in radiology, and thank you for coming to the Dr. Bob Show. Well, thank, thanks, Dr. Bob. I appreciate the invite. It was great to be here.